Coach Brown here coming to you from his classroom. So today, classes, we're going to start the relationship unit. So I asked myself, who are you to teach relationships? Because I do come from a divorce. And the one thing when you talk about relationships, you can only acknowledge where you failed. Okay, I cannot fix where my partner or someone else failed, but I can acknowledge my own failures. So with that being said, my own failures come from prioritizing not making my family or my ex-wife a priority because I had an addiction. I had an addiction and it was called football. Football was a priority. This thing called Verona football was a priority in my life and at the time I could not juggle my priorities. When my wife or my family, my kids should have been a priority, it was not, okay? Meaning, you know, we had a, we had a couple miscarriages and I was the guy who went and we had a miscarriage, mean we lost two children, we lost two babies, but I went and made sure my ex-wife was okay. And once I figured out she was okay, I went to football practice. One time she had a major surgery, okay? She had a major surgery, I went and made sure she was okay. Then I went and coached against Hermitage. Okay, y'all, when my own daughter, my own daughter was born, I spent a couple hours, I was in the delivery room. After delivery, I made sure that everybody was okay, hung out with my own family. I went to football practice soon after. I had no priorities in my life, okay, and it cost me a family, it cost me my marriage, but what it did teach me, it taught me a balancing act that, you know, football is not my priority, and once I figured that out, I become a better coach. With that being said, relationships about learning. All right, so when I talk to you about learning, the one thing that you got to understand about relationships is what you're attracted to. You got to understand what you're attracted to, and once you figure out what you're attracted to, then you can find what you relate into the opposite sex or the same sex of your preference, okay? Meaning, at a certain age, everybody thinks that physical attraction is everything. Physical attraction is a lot. You have to be physically attracted to the person, okay? But it should not be the number one priority, but it should be a priority. Because I've never heard a man say, man, I love my wife, but she's, she's butt ugly. No, it don't work like that. You got to be physically attracted to her. But there's other sides to it. There's emotional, there's social, there's financial, there's intellectual. There's other needs that you have to have that must be net, met that you're looking for in another person. For example, for me, the thing I'm most attracted to in another person is intellectual or communication, okay? They have to be intellectual, okay? When I sit down and communicate with them, I can't sit there and go, my gosh, they're stupid. No, it don't work like that. I got to be able to communicate with them. They got to be able to talk. If they can't talk, then, you know, that's an attraction of mine. If you can't communicate, then I'm not attracted to you. If you're not intelligent, then I'm not attracted to you. So with that being said, pretty much I set myself on a certain standard, but it's what I'm, it's how my needs need to be met. So remember, when you're talking about emotional needs being met, social needs being met, financial needs, needs being met, intellectual communication, then physical, it's a lot that goes into developing a relationship. What you need to understand is what are your preferences? Once you find somebody that has preferences or, or same like actions or mindset that meets all your needs, that is incompatible to you, then you will figure it out. So, Right now, Coach Brown is going to give you his elite eight of red flags. What are red flags in a relationship? What must you look for? Okay, I named these the elite eight because these are elite eight. These are eight things you should look for that if it is happening, that is a red flag. It is not good in your relationship. So number one, if your partner, if the person you're looking for, if the person that you want to date has a history of cheating, they are not right for you. Once a cheater, they pretty much always a cheater, okay? Once you're a cheater, you learn how to lie, you learn how to manipulate to get through, to cover up the fact that you're interested in other people, okay? It's hard. Now, you can cheat once and you can forgive them, and maybe they have a story of why they cheated and it's believable, but if they have a history of multiple cheating, y'all, they not for you. The bottom line is they're going to cheat on you, whether it's a girl or whether it's a boy, okay? They are going to end up cheating on you because that's who they are. All right, do not be blind to people. The one thing about relationships, they let you know who they are. So believe them. If they're a cheater, they always a cheater. Number two, they want to rush a, rush a relationship forward, okay? If you've only known the person, the male or the female, for three days and they telling you they love you, they don't even know your name, they don't even know your birth date, they don't know your favorite color, they know nothing about you. But all of a sudden they're in love with you, they're not for you. That means they needy. They don't understand who they are. Okay, 
They don't take time to get to know you. Not only do they rush the relationship forward, they put pressure on you to rush the relationship forward. So understand, take time in these relationships. Make sure you understand they understand what both of y'all's needs are and how to meet them and go with it from there. Don't allow them to rush it forward, okay? They drive a wedge between your family and friends. All of a sudden, you're dating somebody that won't let you go out with your friends. All of a sudden, you're dating somebody that won't let you hang out with your own family. Y'all, that is not a good relationship. That is not positive within the relationship. So if they driving away, it's changing your social setting to what you used to. Not only are they driving away, it's for it. They get angry if you want to hang out with your friends. They get angry if, they want to hang, if you want to hang out with your family. They get angry if they're jealous of your friends. That is not a positive sign in your relationship. All right? Number four. All right, they have no work ethic. Yeah, let me tell you something. Somebody who don't get good grades is not good. Now, somebody who don't have a strong work ethic, work ethic at their own job is not good. Now, if they're not interested in good and good grades, y'all, what good are they going to do for you? Okay, what good are they going to gonna be a Chick-fil-A chef? They're going to cook chicken and nuggets the rest of their life? Well, guess what you're going to live on financially? All right, or guess who they're going to come to when their financial needs need to be met? Okay, so if they have no work ethic in school, that means they don't care. That means they have no lifelong dream set for them. Okay, now there's plenty of people that's been successful that didn't do good in school. Okay, but if they're lazy, no work ethic in school, and then when they get to a point where they can go get a job, all right, and they settled in that job, one don't want to move forward. If they don't go to the job, if they don't like the jobs, they constantly switch to jobs. Y'all, that's who they are. Again, they're telling you who they are. Believe them. All right, number five disrespectful they disrespectful for the te to the teachers they disrespectful to their parents they disrespectful for the all adults they disrespectful to their peers guess who else they're going to be disre disrespectful to they're going to be disrespectful for you again don't turn a blind eye to who they are because they'll tell you who they are and if they disrespectful to you guess what the day is the day when they decide that they are ready to be a parent guess what they're going to teach their kids to be they're going to teach their kids to be disrespectful because they think it's okay to disrespect people, okay? If you find somebody that's caring, that looks out for others, that place others' needs before them own, that's nice to people, you got a good one. But if they disrespectful, again, don't turn a blind eye for when they tell you exactly who they are, all right? When if they demand it? When if they demand and tell you what time to be there, when to be there, who to see, what you need to do, they try to control every aspect of your life, if they very demanding, that's my sixth red flag. Don't hang out with nobody that's demanding. If somebody demands you to be something, okay, they trying to control you. They trying to belittle you. They trying to let you know they some peer and you in fear. They trying to let you know that they on the top of the totem pole, you at the bottom of the totem pole. Have too much respect in yourself to let somebody demand you to do things. If they care about you, it will be an equal relationship where both of y'all's opinion matter. Y'all can weigh the balances, come together, and all decisions can be, be made between you. Demanding's a red flag. Number seven, they refuse to allow the relationship to go public. If they don't acknowledge you, that's bad. If they don't allow it to go public, that's bad. If they don't want to let other people know y'all dating, they cover it up so they can date other people. Okay. Do not allow somebody not to acknowledge you. All right. Nobody's worth somebody not to acknowledge you. If they don't acknowledge you, wash your hands of them. Get rid of them. You got too much pride. You're too beautiful of a person. You're too beautiful inside and outside to let somebody not acknowledge you. If they don't acknowledge you, then get rid of them. All right, that is not that is very not nice if somebody does not acknowledge you. That's my number seven red flag. My eighth red flag, the of the elite eight, is finances. These people don't have no money. They always asking you for money. They always going else elsewhere to get money. If they have no financial means, okay. If they have no financial means, that's what they're gonna be the rest of their life, okay. They moochers. They mooch off you. They expect you to give them money. They expect the parents to give them money. They look for excuses everywhere else to get money or somebody to give them money when the whole time that they've been looking to mooch off somebody, if they just go out and get a job, go out and work hard for the money, they'd have money. Don't allow anybody to mooch off you and take your financial means from you. All right? With that being said, this is my small lesson in relationships. The bottom line is 
Go meet somebody who is compatible to you that meets your or y'all have the same emotional, financial, intellectual, social, mental, and physical needs. Go meet that person and make sure they're good people. Make sure they're caring people, okay? You'll go a long ways. You won't have much heartbreak, and you're compatible to people. Good luck. Stu Brown relationships. I wouldn't listen to me either. I failed. But I'm trying.